we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two Drink Minimum, the only podcast that takes great joy out of bullying the less fortunate. The gentleman in front of me <laughs> is leading the charge against those cocksuckers. Comedy legend, Mike Ward. I am Mike Ward. You are Pentalis. Hmm. And our friend here. The less fortunate. Less fortunate. Are you really exactly. say that? By less fortunate, we mean intellectually. <laughs> is yeah. all we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You thought monetarily? That doesn't matter. No, so that yeah. does not play a role in this. <laughs> the intellectual dum-dums, we are against them. <laughs> so um, before we even get started, we have to announce that Mike Ward Suzakut live at the Bell Center. Yeah. Tickets went on sale on Saturday. And then 14 minutes later, 12,000 of them were already sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, I don't know what we're up to now. But uh, yeah, we're over 12,000. That's Which insane. is insane. So here was the goal. The insane. goal was let's beat the Guinness Book uh, uh, Records was was Mike's selling point, right? He's like, I'm going to beat it. I think the live podcast record is about 1,000 people. I think it'll be 14 minutes later. <laughs> Is there even a reason to have a show? (laughs) That's been great. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. All all of the $92 tickets sold out, a $75 ticket sold out, and the $58 ticket sold out. So now there's the $15 ones, the $30 and $42. Tax and uh, included, uh, yeah, and um, all the fees. Oh, this is gonna be epic. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I think. I sent you a gif of. I said it's the summer of Mike, but I sent you the gif of Costanza, the summer of George. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they just hanging out. Everything. He's <laughs> like, it's the summer of George. So, uh, Poseidon, yes. my brother. I just want to mm-hmm. get my brother called, and he said he's gonna come with his wife. His wife doesn't speak a word of French. He's bringing his kids. Do they, they speak French? They kind of speak. They speak French, but not enough to understand a French podcast. I don't think. And uh, but well, anyway, gonna, which is a good thing. They're gonna fucking learn today. Yeah, they, they, should but, ins- they should install Duolingo then. Yeah. Oh, that that's the app. Yeah. That I don't think that'll work well with a podcast though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Slow yeah. down. Let me type that in here. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of accent is that? <laughs> is that a backslash or a forward slash? Well, I meant I meant they download it beforehand and they practice so they can practice understand what? better. Practice their French. Yeah, but they have to hear you talk, like Mike and Anne. And they're 10 years old, yeah. so I don't think oh, okay. I want them seeing their drunk uncle <laughs> do rape jokes in front of 28,000 people. Yeah, okay, I don't know, I don't know about <laughs> but that. But my brother, was he got he got really excited. He was like, I'm going to go see you live. live. And he was like, is Poseidon going to be there? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, he was really excited about <laughs> seeing you live. Everybody, Everybody's wondering, they're like, but what's the what kind of capacity can Poseidon perform at? Like, what can he possibly do? And I'm still thinking, him on stage, getting his Tinder profile pictures yeah. before the show starts, yeah. and then uh, him having to explain that to a Tinder date. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. There's... What are you going to say? Why were you at the Bell Center yeah. in the middle of the... What are you going to say? What's going to be your excuse? Well, this one time I shit my pants for $2,000. <laughs> it started a, a, a string of events. <laughs> oh, that made me uh, realize, too. Remember last week, I, I was talking about how I brought my dog to the vet to mm. get her eyes fixed what and happened? it was going to be five thousand dollars and then i was like i'm not sure if i'm going to do it but then i thought i was like this is my fucking animal that's on me 24 7 and i gave him two thousand to <laughs> shit his pants and then i was thinking about helping a fucking living creature that i love see and i was like too expensive <laughs> <laughs> but have you decided that yeah so now we're going uh, well we went back this week to do more tests and she has a, a heart condition oh. so now we have to check her heart to make sure uh she can uh survive an operation ah, poor thing That's yeah so sad. maybe make th- maybe think of my dog yeah and she's i think she's younger than i thought she was because we have no idea how old she is. Same, she's same a with rescue. Mine. Yeah. And um, so I thought she looks like she's about 10 or 12. But I think dogs had had a shitty, like... The age. Yeah. Hard, yeah. Like, because the, the doctor, she said she was like, no, I think she's maximum eight. So eight is worth it. Cause yeah, that's good. The, she probably has like four more years left. Well, mine, when I got her three years ago, they said she was seven. So okay. she'll be like 10, 11 now. But I was like, mm, I don't, now I'm starting to think about it. I don't think they're right. I think it's just because I got her with that post-traumatic stress and yeah. she was all yeah, fucked up. Because yeah. now you see her, she's fucking hopping around oh, and she's like a puppy. Yeah. yeah. She even, she even uh, jumped on the couch the other day. Uh, all by, Usually she needs help. Because it's higher up. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. last time she just... That's because she got scared. Yeah. She saw Poseidon. She's like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm nobody's dinner tonight. <laughs> I think though when you do have a shitty... Like when you look at kids 
that grew up with a mom that was like a prostitute mm. or uh, uh, like parents that, that were on drugs. Yeah. They always, they're, they're 22, but they look like they're 40. Because they've lived that yeah. many lives. I had a guy last okay. weekend, I was doing shows and uh, there was a guy in the front row and I started talking to him. And then I look at him because he had really young eyes, but he had an old face. So I was like, I was sure he was in his 40s, late 40s, early 50s. With good eyes. And But he was 21. No. Yeah, no. but he was because he was bald and had a beard. So you can't be uh, like fucking mm. receding hairline with oh, a beard. Oh, he's receding hair, hairline yeah, bald. Yeah, not, it wasn't like okay. shape. It, wasn't it was like, like Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it was a guy that's like, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. My hairline's not receding. Like it's, you know, <laughs> He refuses to, to acknowledge yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, Hulk Hogan. I just have a yeah. big forehead. Where's my bandana, brother? Yeah. It was a five head. Yeah. Yeah. So I heard your plan. We saw it on Twitter, you idiot. His plan was to fake having the coronavirus so he doesn't have to go to work for a while. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Do a lot of people right now um, use that as an excuse? I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I think I might be infected. Okay, don't take a chance. Just stay (laughs) home. We'll pay you. Because that's a smart strategy because nobody wants to fuck around with that. And I heard in Iran people to, to show defiance, they were licking religious relics to be like, we're not scared of coronavirus. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fucking insane. You, my friend, Islamic uh, fundamentalists, <laughs> not insane. They're licking. They've it, done nothing to prove this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that. But how crazy is that? That that like in 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 Iran, it's illegal to be gay because yeah. of their religion. But you can lick and suck all of the religious items yeah. like they were cocks. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay. God. This was this was Mohammed's favorite broom. Oh, it's like a, <laughs> yeah. He's playing with the imaginary balls. Hassan, what are you? What, yeah. are, you, what are you trying to prove here? I'm trying to prove that I'm immune to the coronavirus because I'm a believer. <laughs> That's an insult to Allah. His his nuts would be way bigger. But <laughs> <laughs> he is the That's chosen funny. one. Yeah. It's like this. It's not like this. It's all little, little, tiny Christian balls. You, yeah, you know what? Bring both your hands here. Both your hands here. You hold your hands there. I'll hold. It, it's fucked up. But. I don't get it. Like some people are, uh, like it seems like this. in some news they're overplaying it. Like it's much more dangerous. Some people are like, no, it's not that. And dangerous. some are underplaying it too. Yeah. yeah. So, so was, we have no idea. So we have no idea how deadly this thing is. Uh, well, deadly. I mean, not all the people that get it die. Yeah, I, I think it's zero point two percent. I read that, that get it uh, yeah. between yeah. the ages of. Uh, you have to be older. Of let's say yeah. eighteen and uh, fifty. It's like AIDS in the nineties. I Only guess. gay people are getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in Iran, it's only gay yeah. people getting it. Yeah, why do you have coronavirus? <laughs> You're one of them homosexuals. Because if you were right with Allah, you wouldn't be getting this. <laughs> but yeah, it's what? what's the percentage of people Z- Between that 18 and 50, it's 0.2% death toll. 18 and 50, 0.2%. Oh, yeah. that's... I like those odds. Bad. Yeah, mm. fuck it. Bring uh, it infect on. me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're saying it's like a, it's like a um, old people disease. No, it's like a less effective form of virus than uh, what was the one in the 1920s that broke out? The Holocaust, the plague? <laughs> no, 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 the 19 uh, the or the smallpox. Right after World War One, there was um, I'm forgetting the name. You're not talking about the bubonic plague. Was it? No, it wasn't. No. It was the I think SARS. Is I it when I think SARS didn't SARS, happen after World War Two? Well, SARS no, was World in War World I, War One. Yeah, after <laughs> World War One. That's what I said. Nine okay. Eleven. World sorry. War Two. I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, after after. <laughs> yeah, the remember in, in World War Two when uh, fucking Osama bin Laden. No. <laughs> flew no, into there was... the World Trade Center. That motherfucker. <laughs> when the Germans unleashed SARS uh, on the planet. Yeah. That was that was Hitler's last uh, last yeah. offensive. <clears throat> I forgot the name, but it killed like a shit ton of people. It's like yeah. a, they're saying it's like a less effective virus than that. It's similar, but less Polio. effective. I think so. Cholera. Cholera. I think cholera. Really? Yeah. So yeah. Le- so we shouldn't worry is what you're saying. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. I can't take any advice from you. You're Poseidon. <laughs> I read an article that says that uh, people that wear masks. If you have uh, symptoms, it's a good idea. But if you don't, you're probably infecting yourself because you always you have your hands in your face. Oh yeah, that's fine. When you put them on, well, they're finding excuses for everything. First, they said yeah. shave your beard because if you have a beard, you're gonna get coronavirus. Like, uh, really? It's just so, just, just wash your hands. I have yeah. a friend uh, named Alain in uh, Trois Rivières that he's a. Uh, he, he's disabled, so uh, I, I went to see him because I had a show in Trois-Rivières. And I'm always worried when I when I think I might have a cold, because if he catches a cold, he dies. He oh, has shit. like a, yeah, so he, he has a, um, 
uh, a mus- a muscular dystrophy and he's like he his I think his life expen- expectancy was like 22 and he's 47. Oh, he's made it. Yeah, yeah, oh, good for yeah, him. yeah. So but I'm like as soon as I found out how easy it was for him to die, I'm always nervous. I, I go to his house and I'm like, ah, I might have a cult. I always borrow a mask. And then I borrowed one. And then when I left, he told me he was like, yeah, masks, uh, the, the price like fucking quadrupled because now people it used to be no one bought yeah, like face 10 masks cents a mask except for it. asian women and yeah. uh, handicapped people even yeah. the the hand sanitizer apparently on amazon was going for 250 the one liter one 250 that's dollars business. 250 that's yeah, yeah yeah damn. supply and demand sir those God are yeah. damn yeah. nuts if you have a friend like that that's like completely disabled and then does he come to your shows in those towns uh, he he just in the summer he can't go out during the winter because his uh, lungs will collapse because okay. the uh, cold air. But in the summer he always comes. S- uh, summer he's always there. Because yeah. you wouldn't believe him. Like even if you go and he's like, I'm busy. You're like where are you gonna go? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> just come to the show. He's always really happy though. Whenever he like he, he's the person I know that loves life the most. Oh, and, and it's fun talking to him because especially like during my depression. Because during my depression, I was like, my life fucking is so hard. You know what and I'm talking about? <laughs> and then I'd see him. And like this winter, he he texted me and he was like, I don't have anyone to feed me today because he can't move. And he oh. so he has a, the government wants to put him in a home. But so he, did you tell him, stop he, bitching. People are yeah. mad at me. <laughs> he, <laughs> People are mad at me on the Internet. Stop bitching about your pathetic problems. <laughs> did you tell him? <laughs> But it's crazy. You can't complain. No, you can't complain. Yeah. Like I, my <clears throat> wife actually got way better because of him. Because my wife was the type of person we'd go to Florida and she it had rained for twenty minutes. She'd be like, well, "Fuck, we we have no luck." And I was like, "Yeah, we have a bit of luck. Hello. Like we fucking we paid cash for this house yeah. and it's fucking it's raining for twenty minutes. So <laughs> I'm on know. a boat. I killed three people. Nothing's gonna yeah. happen to me. This is a great life." <laughs> 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 but she like, and then as soon as I uh, I brought her to see, uh, uh, I was doing a show for Alain. I brought her. She met Alain. And she shut the fuck up. I like after that. that. Yeah, I'm gonna use that strategy yeah, every time yeah. I need it to put yeah. to put a, to put some chick in her place. Yeah, I'm calling you. I even talked about him once. One of my friends was going through this weird. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, he he had just got broken up with, and he was crying. And I was like, "Look, your fucking life, it, your life's good." And then I started talking about how you know some people in third world countries are starving to death, and some. And then he was like, "But I'm I'm still sad." <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I shouldn't talk about fucking famine to someone that that's." <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you were using dumped. examples that are worse for yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't using like LA as an example, but I was using like I was like fucking people in in some countries fucking eat four times a day, or they walk nine miles to get water, and then they get raped in the jungle. That, <laughs> that, that was that, that was me and Guido on the live stream on on Sunday. I was yeah. yelling at him. He's like, oh well, I'm going. Th- you're not going through anything. You fucking idiot. You're not going through anything. You know, you're alive. You're healthy. You're well. Like you, you're doing shows. You're selling your house. Like he was acting like every the world was on fire because he had to move stuff out of his house that he's selling to make money off. I was like, what? that's Why insane. Why is that a bad thing? That's what I told him. But it's just because he's always amplifying stuff. So I yelled okay. at him a lot, right? And then we went to do the radio promo for the show yesterday. And I told him, are you sure I should be there? Like, can't you do this by yourself? He's like, no, no, I need you to be there. You know, we got to sell this thing. Go on there and sell. And nobody talked to me. I sat there. The people on the radio, you know, radio, they don't know who the fuck I am. So they, the guy had no idea. He's just asking, instead of talking about the comedy, he's asking about his, uh, Guido about his restaurant. And, and then Guido's like, well, I'm homeless now. I'm living in New York and here. I'm sleeping on couches. I was like, what the fuck is happening? What, yeah. is, what am I being part of? Why did I wake up at 6 in the fucking morning to be here for this shit? So stupid. So stupid. It's weird because remember the other night when we did that show and he was there. Yeah. I asked him, I was like, how, how are tickets selling for that? And he's a pro- like you he's guys are are, yeah. are uh, all through producing, and uh, he goes, "I don't want to know." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "You're a goddamn producer. You have to know." This that, is what I'm dealing that with. That is your only the only job a producer has is fucking producing. Yeah. So he, like, how are you gonna know if you if you need to step it up or like <laughs> he's producing depression yeah. in him and anger in me. That's all he's producing. Fuck. Nah. Like I'm like the the Bell Center. I'm one of the co-producers, so I'm fucking checking every day, and I'm texting people just to get the numbers. Cause, yeah. Like you now, see what's happening. Like I'm not stressed out anymore for for you know. You already broke a money. world record. You're but y- you know I still want to I still want to know if like two weeks before the show we have eight thousand tickets to sell. Yeah. Then we got to do yeah, something. Yeah, we got to push. Yeah. yeah. 
oh, it's just so, so it was just an unbelievable mm -hmm. series of days. And, and I keep waking up early and then, you know, he doesn't show up and all that. So I've had a really fucked up week. And then I get into this weird YouTube trend where I start looking at like um, crazy videos on YouTube. You remember Chris Hansen? Yeah, yeah, you remember yeah. Chris Hansen? You know, uh, to catch a pedophile. Uh, pe oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pred I don't know. I was gonna say predator and catch a pedophile. And it came out. Catch a pedophile, <laughs> which is a new breed. Yeah, pedophile. pedophile sounds <laughs> worse. Pedophile. <laughs> pedophile is like a fucking weirdo that has sex with little kids. I, He's got spikes on his back. I have a question. Because if you, let's say you were one of these fucking predators, okay? You'd think that when you're confronted by an adult or something, you wouldn't have as much confidence. I was watching one guy who showed up with like a, a hat, and he, you know, those guys that are 40, but they dress like they're 15 yeah. with the shirt that's like nine sizes too big, you know? And I was like, this is the confidence. He's like, yeah, I'm here. I was going to take her to a party. So well, you can't keep me here. I know the law. I know people in the law. And I, was, and, and I sent it to him so, we, so I could show you guys here what I'm talking about. It's so absurd the level of confidence that a, when you've already lost, it's like going into a game. And you're already down by 15 goals. You're like, I'm going to fuck you up. Uh, dude, you're down. Shut the fuck up. So you, you have to see this guy. Look. Walking in our back door is... First of all, look how he's dressed. Old ...David Schumacher. Screen name, Freebird72000. <laughs> he's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a young teen named B. Ooh. Knock, knock. Oh, no. Hey, come that. on in. Play on, play on. Our 19-year-old actress, the decoy playing B, invites him in. She's a girl that looks... <laughs> look at oh, him. Oh, oh, <laughs> God damn, what a fucking loser. What a loser. He's looking like he's eating the food, Online, and he's, he the girl he's going to the TV. And he's never been there. To a birthday party. And from his online chat, it appears he has his sights on a party for With your two. head. Uh, I want to be your first, baby. Okay. You're going to put my in your mouth? Because I like that. I guess I can try you it. probably spelled K-O-K. -K. 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 I'll show you heaven. <laughs> he goes on to talk about having different kinds of sex with the virgin and then gets almost poetic. Do you want to make love or for your first time? What's the difference? <laughs> is just raw passion and making love is a connection of bodies, I guess. Freebird what the fuck's he talking about? also mentions online that he's going to bring marijuana. Ooh. Did you bring some green? No, we're going to smoke some marijuana. Look at him! Cookies are good munchies. He, he's... He looks like a chipmunk. Yeah, look at him. Yeah. Look hey, at him. Why don't you have a seat right over there? <laughs> good, how are you? What's happened? Like so many... He just sat <laughs> down! ...in this house, the what man sits out. and answers questions. Look at him. can't figure out if I'm the girl's father <laughs> or a police officer. Hey, look, he's not leaving. And remember, he has no idea he's being videotaped. Oh, and he's oh. still eating. Well, you yeah. tell me what's going on. <laughs> Your dad or something? What are you You're doing, dad? I'm David. How are you doing? David, I'm Chris. Oh, look at him. How's everything? Surprised he didn't shake. Like yeah. <laughs> What's up? Party. You said the girl here was going to go with you to the birthday party. Who are you? I'll get to that. <laughs> What's your date's name for the party? B. B. And how old is B? I don't know. You didn't really tell me. But she did tell him. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't really. 14. Anyway, 14. so this is the kind of shit. I don't know what he's yeah. doing now, Hanson. He's, he's starting a new show, apparently. That's nuts. Chris Hanson started a new show, apparently. You know really? about that? Oh. Really? No. Nah. Yeah, he go now he, well, he mostly does it to like, uh, I think, YouTube celebrities and all that. Like basically people who are famous and they shouldn't be famous. And he tracks down. Uh, shit if, that they've done. If, that they've done or they do. Uh, if it's pedophile, if it's anything illegal. Okay. It's crazy. Pierre, you, I think Pierre has a... Um, uh, a video? Uh, yeah, video of that one, yeah. All right. Yeah. Poseidon, Poseidon. Oh, shit, Poseidon. First of all, that name is so suspicious. Predator-like, really. Poseidon. Chris Hansen here of Hansen versus Predators to catch a predator and have a seat with Chris Hansen. Now I'm going to need you, Poseidon, to have a seat right over there. I want you to know that I've been going through the transcripts, and in spite of the many disturbing things I've seen throughout my career... I've never seen someone do that to a horse. Absolutely <laughs> disgusting. He's sickle. Cut it out. Before you meet me in a dark kitchen someplace, having to call Mike and Pantelis to throw your bail. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Clean up your act. I'll be watching. And I'll see you soon on the TV and the YouTube. <laughs> Beside it, bro. What the uh, fuck are you doing with a horse? That's amazing. What did you do to a horse? Oh. Friend of the show, Chris Hansen. Yeah. What doesn't happens appreciate in Texas it. stays in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Look at the panic. That was so funny. Yeah. I enjoyed that. For real, though, yeah. we're, we're going to show the video of you and the horse next. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
I always thought that you'd be a top. Hmm. I didn't peg you as a bottom. Yeah, the horse really yeah. fucked the shit out of yeah. you. <laughs> and you got to, and he kept on yelling, is it in yet? <laughs> <laughs> How can you not feel oh, a horse shit. cock? <laughs> yeah, what have you been doing? What kind of experience do you have? What are you doing here, sir? What are you doing here? <laughs> that's funny, eh? Yeah, that's funny. Do you want me to send to your coworkers? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, we've been investigating some some, some claims here. <laughs> Apparently, you got fucked in the ass by a horse, <laughs> and you you initiated the sex. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, how the show's going? Uh, shows are going good. Yeah? Shows are going very good. Uh, you sent me an email. I got it. Oh. I'll come do some French shows with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was something that was really weird that mm. happened this weekend. I'm on stage uh, in uh, Trois-Rivières yeah. and a uh, really nice theater and the crowd is fucking like on fire. It was one of, I think, one of my best shows uh, reaction-wise. And it was just insane. And my opening bit, the last joke, I always get like an applause break for like 20 seconds. Yeah. And there's one guy in the front. Angry? Yeah, he's just angry. And then I look at him and it's a pedophile joke. And I go, oh. well, well, what's the matter? And he goes, that that was, you went too far. And I was like, you went, I went too far. I was like, making because, fun of because pedophiles? I made fun of pedophiles. Should, should the pedophile be the hero in my joke? Is that what you're saying? And then he was like, no. I saw you, and then he he was some piece of shit that I'd met in uh, in uh, Haiti about 10 years ago. First time I went to Haiti, he was some fucking weirdo that had a production company. It's a white guy, but uh, he lived in Haiti, and he oh, was just- Any white guy that lives in Haiti yeah. is suspicious. <laughs> that's a, when I got off stage. That's exactly what I told Preach. I was like, fuck every white person in Haiti, are gar they're all garbage people. Yeah. But he was I'm like, willing to back you yeah. up on that. Because <laughs> he told me he 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 pretended no after he was like, no, but I got uh, it, that's the same bit you were doing in Haiti. I was like, OK, I did that bit about the Human Rights Commission pedophiles 10 years ago before I before they got caught and before I knew about the Human Rights Commission. I was doing yeah. that joke 10 yeah, years what are you ago. Talking about? What the fuck is wrong with you? And then he he was just a piece of shit the whole time. And his stupid and front row. And my tickets like had sold out almost a year ago. So I was like, you fucking asshole. You bought tickets a year ago. So someone that wanted to see me couldn't get tickets because of this fucking piece but of you were, shit. But you were talking to him during the show? Yeah. So and he I, was bringing down the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but every time, though, I was like, I'd always go like... Uh, uh, <laughs> like I have a bit about Haiti and I was like, they're beautiful people, except this one white piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, it was always amazing. <laughs> that's suspicious. I, what though, a him, fucking piece of shit. Him being upset at a pedophile joke. That's no, no. What's his, yeah. He didn't even care about the pedophile no, joke. He, he didn't just care about the piece pedophile. of shit. Yeah. Cause he had come up to me. The, the reason why I remembered him, I never remember people. And I rarely like, I'm, I, I don't get mad at people in real life. But then when I do get mad, I fucking get violent. But it has to be something serious. Yeah, and it, that happened to him like about uh, what, when I met him. I I was in Haiti and I'd done a bunch of shows. This is the, fr the these were the first years that I was traveling a little with my comedy, like outside of uh, Quebec. And um, I was uh, I'd done a bunch of shows in France and no one could understand my French in France at that really? time. Really? Yeah. So I was like, I told Michelle, I was like, fuck it. Whenever I go anywhere now, it's in English. So I'd even done shows in France in English and I just did shows in English and I got booked in Haiti and I was like, I'll, OK, I'll do the show as long as it's in English. They were like, no problem, because in Haiti, uh, the, the people speak Creole, the poor people speak French, but the rich speak English and the oh, people that pay f to see shows are English. Right. Because yeah, the poor they have people money. Yeah. don't have money. So it, I was doing a show in front of English people in Haiti. And then this guy comes up to me and he's like during the day and he's like, yeah, that's a that's a insult to the Haitian people doing your show in English. Uh, he's like, because the English colonized. It. And I was like, no, the French colonized Haiti. Yeah. The French, the, the people that fucking like the slave owners were 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 French. Yeah. And and he was like, uh, no, but it's an insult and blah, blah, you know blah. It's an insult. You being here. Get yeah. here, Whitey. And then I was like, I was like. He he was like, you should do your shows for the people. I was like, the fucking people speak Creole, and and uh, the f the people that do speak French, it's not the same French as me. The English, it's the same English as me. So go fuck yourself. Go fuck. And then he was like, no, no. And I was like, go fuck yourself. 
And then he was like, no. And, and I was like, you bought a ticket? I'll give you your money back. I wanted to give him a refund. I told him to fuck off. I told him to leave. I told the people not to let him in. And then he, he got in anyway. And then he fucking comes back 10 years later. What a piece of I shit. I wish I was there. Yeah, what a fucking I wish piece me and Poseidon shit. were there. Yeah. I could guarantee you one thing. He would not be making his way back home to Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> I think he lives in, uh, in Tor Rivière now, though. Thank you for letting me know yeah. this. That's good information. Yeah. <laughs> what does he look like? He looks like a piece of shit. Okay, a white piece of shit. Yeah, a white piece a of shit. A lot of white piece of yeah. shit out there. He looks, like a, he looks like every guy except for the rapper guy on To Catch a Predator. <laughs> like, he looks like he's kind of, uh, you know, glasses. He looks like... Um, I guess they're right. He looks like a, uh, there was a serial killer that kind of looked like him. Kind of bald. Bundy. No, kind of bald glasses. Oh, bald. Oh, Who's a bald serial killer? Uh, I think I have heard the of The Russian one. There's a uh, Russian serial there killer? Was, uh, the, the Iceman? No, I, that, I, he no was idea. Polish. Why do you say it like that? Not Iceman. 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 No, Iceman. he was Polish. Iceman. 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 Why do you say Iceman? Johnny Iceman. Yeah, Johnny Iceman. Like it's a name. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I said that like that. Matt Iceman. No, it's uh, Iceman. Iceman. Yeah, no, it's, he was Polish. It's like gas station. Like you fuck gas station up, stop at a gas station. Same stop thing. at a gas station. Yeah. No. You ever hear him say exhaust? <laughs> no. <laughs> exhaust. He used to bother me. He's like, "What about your exhaust?" I go, "It's not. It's not a meal. It's not exhaust. It's exhaust." He's like, "Yeah, you exhaust." How do you say it? And now he's gonna try to say it properly. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. And then he's like, he doesn't exhaust. remember. He's trying his best. Exhaust. Exhaust. He's trying his best. The exhaust. He's trying the, his best. The, yeah. Still doesn't work. Exhaust. <laughs> Exhaust. The exhaust. The exhaust. There he said the exhaust. That's it. That's what he said. The, the exhaust. exhaust. The exhaust. And I used to go crazy. Exhaust. I was like, what do you mean the exhaust? Why do I the say The eggs are like poached. This? What are you talking about? The exhaust. When I was a kid, I used to say... Um, I'm no, a... daddy. No, not there. No, yeah, Jesus not Christ, him. bro. Come on, daddy. Quit teasing. Put it in. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> mm. Oh, uh, Mike's going to fucking enjoy this. You're going to fucking... Oh, my God, Mike. Thank God. I, so, I was at the Comedy <laughs> Nest on Sunday. I was backstage. I laughed so hard with Akron and everyone because um, when I was starting doing stand-up, there was a lot of weirdos that started around me. And there was this one guy. He looked like Uncle Fester. this big guy. He was a little weird. He was so mad at his best friend winning some kind of open mic competition at the Comedy Works that he had called up and said, that guy's a pedophile. Don't give him an award. Oh, like no. he wanted to end the really? night. Yeah, that's how crazy he was. And this was his friend. This was his friend. <laughs> oh, but he was jealous. That. So one night he was performing at the Nest. It was an open mic night. And he was walking up the stage. And they they started playing a song. And this guy's a massive guy. He looks like Uncle Fester, bald. So he's walking up the stage. And the song that was playing was Our House in the Middle of... Right? But he took a misstep, fell off the stage... Oh. Onto two tables, the tables collapsed with him. Okay, but while this is happening, the song kept playing. <laughs> oh, and then they left it on because they went to help him, <laughs> but he was motionless because he had like a neck problem. So he was on the floor, he was dead. They were trying to release him up, but the song kept playing. <laughs> so people are sitting there, our oh, house, and everything's collapsing. <laughs> and Vlad Levitt was telling me, he's like, You don't remember that because I wasn't there. I go, I wasn't there that night. And they were describing it, dude. I was crying. Just it's one of those unintentionally funny moments. Yeah. Just because they didn't oh, stop God. the song yeah. she just, yeah. there's anarchy the guy fell through the tables <laughs> Our house in the middle of and everything's going to shit oh <laughs> it made my fucking and i i'm the only one that remember that he had called the pedophile uh scare thing i remember that because i remember people talking about it. he called the works he's like that guy you can't give him a but why did they keep booking him like if if i own a club and i yeah. do own a club but if someone calls in and does a, a fake yeah. uh, saying that someone raped someone or, yeah, or, or yeah. call call someone a pedophile, I, I'm I don't know. I haven't seen them in years, so maybe they banned them. Everywhere. Like I wouldn't probably like I wouldn't book any of them ever well, I don't after. I, I like don't... maybe not the guy that got accused of being a pedophile. The guy that got accused too. I don't really see them on the scene, okay. uh, so I don't know if it was self-imposed. One of them might have been self-imposed, but the other guy that called it in, I haven't seen. Like I said, yeah. it's when I started doing comedy. I haven't seen these guys ever since that first mm. year, let's say year mm. and a half. That guy especially, I haven't seen him. So who knows what the fuck happened. But uh, they might have banned him. 
But I don't know at what place that, like, I don't know if that took place before the call or after. Do you think they banned him, though, because of that? Or because of the fall? Because he broke, like, $900 <laughs> no, worth no, of No, no, two chairs. different clubs. He broke the chairs at the nest. <laughs> so, and the, and the competition was at the works. Okay. So, I don't know if it was related or what the fuck happened. All oh, of... it was the best of Montreal competition? Yeah, some shit like that or whatever. The, oh, the best of open. So, yeah. his friend won best open or, mic. Or he was in the finals of best open mic. For the month of March. Because yeah. they used to do Monthly. those every month. Yeah. So, oh, fuck, you have to be such a piece of shit. Yeah, he's so petty. jealous that your friend might be the best open micer. Because he March. called in apparently, and he's like, "Oh, you, you're trying to give him the award? You know that guy fucks kids? Like, does he? Yeah. Can you prove that he doesn't? Can you prove that he does? Oh, and he panicked and hung yeah. up or some shit. And uh, they knew it was him. Like the guy that was there. No, he's like, Fuck. dude, I know his voice. Like I know it was him. <laughs> like these fucking idiots. They're, all ridiculous. these idiot criminals. Yeah. Like the ones that he was talking about were the fake ID. He put yeah. his real address. No. Just <laughs> some people don't even block their numbers. Fuck. You know, and I think yeah, I, would... I used to re remember in the old days when uh, uh, caller ID. Mm. I uh, in two thousand seven, I had done this joke, and people for some reason I don't know how they got my phone number because it it was it was unlisted, yeah. but they got my number, and they were calling me and um, harassing you, harassing me, and some of them were threatening me like a uh, death threats with their number, but their number, and I'd be <laughs> like. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I see your number. I know that Mr. you're... Mr. You're, Trombley. Yeah, I'd be like uh, Steve Ouellette. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> it was fucking... And then I was like, so people are stupid. so stupid. Are like, dumb. if you're, if you're going to threaten someone's life, do it with a fucking fake email address or do it with a... The, if you're going to call, call from a payphone. Find no. a payphone yeah. or a fucking burner phone. Or even try Star 67. Just try. Yeah. Yeah. No, the best way the best way to threaten someone is uh, basically you write Sexually. a... Sexually. No, you write a letter. <laughs> you write a letter, but not with your handwriting. You got to take different... You got to cut out different letters. Are you a psychopath? From a newspaper you, or whatever, <laughs> and stick them and make sentences like a ransom like that. note in in the comic books. Something, something like that. Yeah, he's the yeah. Joker. That's the best way. No, you're the Riddler. You yeah. know, <laughs> you're a criminal from 1971. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the plan is. <laughs> <laughs> you know Pow. where there's a, a shit ton of money. Pay phones. Yeah. <laughs> Pay phones. <laughs> Batman has the Riddler. <laughs> we have the Diddler. <laughs> the Diddler. Yeah. The Diddler. <laughs> the Diddler. Diddly do. <laughs> yeah, he's diddle kids, bro. Why are you so happy? Oh, Jesus Christ, bro. What the hell? <laughs> he was clapping. He's like, I am the Diddler. I am diddly the Diddler. <laughs> Is that how you diddle them? No, bro. Diddly do. I just thought it was funny until you said the kids. You part. thought raping little kids no, was no. funny? No, no. <laughs> That's his. That's his catchphrase. Yeah. He goes, "Diddly do, oh, your asshole's gonna turn into two. Diddly do, oh, Jesus." <laughs> then he gets cut. I thought it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing prop comedy. Yeah, you just don't get the bit, officer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem. You don't have a sense of humor. Oh Jesus Christ! I'm like a ventriloquist. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, I'm so funny. I can't keep my uh, excitement down for the Bell Center stuff. Just the fact that tickets are, and I keep thinking of the billboard last year. I keep thinking of what's Mike doing podcast. Yeah. Man, I keep thinking of that, yeah. and then mm -hmm. this. It's fucking. It's karma. Yeah, we're gonna. Um. Oh fuck! Last week, remember? Like I was saying, how just for laughs had told me we can't, uh, we can't leak this, and I was like, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> a week after you yeah. leak it here so the day before tickets go on sale the day the day before the patreon thing i'm i'm getting emails like fucking crazy so i'm getting like 900 emails during the day for just random shit about the about the bell center and then i i uh, i tell michelle my manager i'm like i'll get um I'll put a thing on on the on uh, my Patreon just to say, hey, tickets are gonna go on sale for you guys tomorrow at noon. Uh, just want just want to let you know. So I sent a message to Jason who handles the social media, but I was like, since I was talking to my wife, I was answering shit. I forgot to write Patreon, so I wrote, hey, uh, can you just put this up at ten o'clock tonight? And I thought, but I I forgot to write Patreon, so he put it on Facebook. Oh, and then I'm getting fucking messages from people like Sugar Sammy and people that I, I know aren't on my Patreon. So I'm like, that's fucking weird. How did they find out? And then I'm I'm thinking maybe a journalist was on my Patreon. I'm like, oh fuck! So I go see my Patreon. It's not on there. And then I go on my Facebook, and I'm like, oh shit. 
So I, I called Jason. I'm like, fuck you, you gotta, we gotta get rid of that. You blame so, Jason, you yeah. buffoon. <laughs> so we got rid of it, but we were lucky though. The only one sort of blogger uh, screen it grabbed up. it. Yeah. And fuck. so it didn't hurt. I think it was because that's an old way of thinking that, that the festival has that we got to we can't we can't announce this before the day we announce it. I think leaking stuff nowadays is always good. It, it depends what it is. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But you, for like ticket sales. Plus, I've been talking about this for like a couple of months. Yeah, it, we, it was everything you've been thinking of and, and kind of hinting to before it was even official or even a possibility was kind of leading up to this. Yeah. It's just when it became possible. I remember that day when you told me we were laughing about it. It's so wacky. And then they asked and I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's yeah. just, everything leading up to it's this so is so stupid. ludicrous. It's so stupid. All of this is... Uh, and uh, the when I did meet the guys uh, at the Bell Center, I don't know if I told you this, but they, I as a joke, I was like, we, we should do the fucking uh, Olympic Stadium next year. And then <laughs> the Olympic Stadium, I think you could get 70,000 people. Yo. And the, the guy told me, he was like, yeah, it's cheaper to rent because no one wants to go to the Olympic Stadium. Oh, it's cheaper yeah, to rent. Yeah, it's, it's because it's out a, of the way. It's, it's, it's way out of the, the way fuck, and it's falling apart. It's falling apart to the middle of nowhere. Glutton Fest, yeah. open invitational. Oh, shit. Olympic Stadium. Oh, my God. Where, oh. We, where we allow Poseidon to fight 300 midgets. You know what we really? should do? Yeah. That sounds like if you win, time. you could eat them. You could eat any of the midgets that you kill. Uh, uh, I don't think I want to eat them, but... Uh, I, I was thinking A thousand for, per midget you eat. For Glutton Fest, yeah. what we should do... We could either do... There's a room uh, that they rent, and they have done comedy shows at, mm. at the Olympic Stadium. You know at the top of the sort of tower? Yeah. Oh, really? There's a, there's a room, 200-seater. Really? Yeah. It, so and we, you're at the top of that. Yeah. Thing. So we could we could either oh do it God. there or uh, if we could get the the comedy nest and that way it'd be at the forum. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> either one is yeah, fucking forum funny. or Olympic Stadium. I think Olympic Stadium is funnier. It's but so it, much funnier. But it's way out of the way. But uh, for the gag, people will yeah. come. That's hilarious. And there's a and there's, there's a metro and there's parking. there's metro and parking. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're set. Yeah. Everything this what a wacky year. Yeah, what a stupid yeah. year. Yeah. What, <laughs> no, my buddy my buddy called me yesterday because he was looking at the numbers of like my podcast and stuff. And he's like, you know, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea when you started doing a French podcast, but like every like you're killing it. Like there's twelve thousand yeah. views on one, there's ten thousand, like it's going better. And I go, Yeah, they're they're not as hatery as the like the, mm. the English side. Like yeah. in the French side, they're all like super supportive. And then he's like, Do you think there's like, you know, opportunities? Like and as uh, one hour later I get an email to for that TV thing, the French TV thing. And I was like, yeah, this is working out. This is just, <laughs> yeah. everything, everything's just happening. Yeah, you got an offer to do a TV show uh, for the Quebec Comedy Festival. Yeah. Uh, but on, it's f- on Uni TV. Yeah. I don't, know is, any, I don't know what any of this Uni, is. Uni TV is kind of like what uh, CBC pretends to be. Oh. Like it, it's an actual, like Uni It's an t- actual organization. Yeah. And Uni TV, they have a lot of really good shows. It's just, uh, it's uh, it's a French Canadian TV network that no one watches because it's TV, but they they have good programming. I'm on. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Why not? It helps. Yeah. It's a it's an eight minute set, easy peasy. Yeah. I got this. And plus the theater that they wanna they wanna have you play is a really fun little. It's a tiny tiny room, but it's a very cool little room. And it's the home of uh, the people who have my back in French comedy, Quebec, yeah, Quebec yeah. City. Quebec they're they're City. always supporting the fuck out of me. Yeah, because so, they're because they're your people. people. They're totally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all Mike Ward fans are like I got him. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's what a crazy year so far, and this yeah. is nothing. This is even the I, apart from the Bell Center yeah. that you've been kind of hoping for. Yeah. We haven't even announced anything. The None Bell even, Center, your TV thing, him, uh, fuck in a horse no. everything is working out as planned <laughs> and we haven't even <laughs> poor guy we haven't even thought at all about the summer like yeah. we haven't put any real planning no, like no. this is all kind of automatic uh, yeah, happened yeah so there's still so much to be, to be done. i think do you think we should do uh and we should have this conversation off the air but i'd rather do it on the air yeah. uh uh, do like we've been doing just for laughs every year for the last two years. Yeah. Uh, I think instead of doing that sad little room in the in the, the bordel, and no, yeah, do it at the bordel. And plus, we'll have the new bordel that'll be open by them yeah. by then, so it'll be a hundred and fifty seater. I think we could get them to agree to anything we want, yeah. really, because if we do it at the, if we could, I, I would like two things if possible: just the bordel 
And if we could decide at least on a pricing for tickets that's more reasonable for people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Nine thousand. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. What was it last year? It was, it was like thirty bucks. Where 30. We were pissed off, and it was the afternoon. Yeah. And now I'm doing the Bell Center and for fifteen. But it was our. It wasn't our. You know. It was yeah, our it wasn't fault. our fault. I, no, what was our fault is that we didn't. We should have asked because we didn't know what the ticket prices were until they started selling, which was yeah. then too late. But they we were should just, have asked. Yeah, they always do that. All every festival does that. They want to sell their their stupid passes. Uh, and because right. it sells more because you'd yeah, like, rather get a pass. Because they're like, you for ninety dollars, you get this pass. You can see every Everything, show yeah, instead of or one to 30. for thirty nine dollars, you can go see Mike and Pantelis talk for twelve minutes. Yeah, it's a uh, well. It is, at yeah. least we give them a good hour. Yeah. Well, that's all they let us give. They're, yeah. I like that. I like that. We're always every other show. They're like, oh, they're leaving us. They're like, wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up. Because <laughs> yeah. by that, that's when we get into our flow. Mm. You know, after 40 minutes. But yeah, that's a good idea. And I don't think they're going to have a problem with it. No. I think it's a novel fucking idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people will be more comfortable here. But, but maybe we could do uh, like that. Uh, I'll get Michelle to pitch it to Just for Laughs to do the Olympic Stadium during Just for Laughs. That's oh, even that's funnier. that's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> To do like the the small room of oh, the Olympic yeah, Stadium, the, 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 yeah, not, uh, we yeah. can't do twenty thousand here, yeah. seventy thousand there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's no more people in the city, Poseidon. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? <laughs> yeah, that know who we are with disposable income. There's a lot oh, of variables also. here. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> the disposable income one is the most. Uh... The one that you're concerned with? Yeah. You could rob everyone. So you think <laughs> everyone know, knows us, but only 11,000 of our fans? <laughs> have like jobs. We, have, we have 9 billion fans, no, it was just a, but only 11,000 I just realized it was jobs. a shitty joke about me saying that nobody in the city has money. Oh, you know what I saw this morning on the way here? You know who signed up to my Patreon? Cool. Oh, Olivier Aubin, our boy. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh. He's... This guy's always got our he back. He did uh, the Canadian Gangster. Uh, he did my French podcast, and I, I, like, I didn't know how many gay fans I had until Olivier came on. And uh, fucking gay guys that like me, fucking love they, him. They all want to fuck him. Yeah, no, they're shit, all bro. like the he's most the sexiest sash. man I've ever seen. Jesus he's, Christ, yeah. he's Quebec's Tom Selleck. He is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's the Quebec Tom Selleck. Yeah, yeah. he just it turns around, does the eyebrow yeah. car stop. <laughs> 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 vending machines he kicks them to get whatever he needs from inside he kicks yeah. it stuff falls out <laughs> I'm looking forward for him to announce uh, the thing the he thing, just the signed thing, the thing. I'm afraid someone leaks it I'm not gonna podcast. leak it <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually I- I'm inviting him uh, on the show I want him to come on the French guy well he has an open invitation come to whatever yeah. he wants mm. he can even come to this if he wants but uh, you know how it is but I want him to do the French cast because I saw him on yours and he's a fun dude yeah yeah he's, he's a very fun-, fun we should have him back on here because we had him like Episode maybe nine or ten. Oh, like, even before that, it was very early early. on. Earlier, yeah. it was even before even Poseidon. Be- yeah. 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 yeah, and he was good. He was good. He was, but it was one well, of the only guests that we had that that actually clicked. Yeah, it, right away off the bat, we yeah. all liked each other. Yeah, because it was sometimes it was weird for us because we didn't know a lot of the people. Yeah, like you, you remember when we brought on uh, Heidi Van Horney? Yeah, so we all liked her, but then her buddy made it awkward. Yeah, yeah. the guy yeah, that I kept yelling. That. Yeah, yeah that were you weird. there? Yeah, I was there watching. Yeah. Oh, hey, you weren't even on the episode. No, I wasn't, but I was watching. Yeah, he was in yeah. the room, not even on the show yet. Yeah. And, and we had l- that guy instead. Yeah. And you would have been so much better yeah. in that seat, the fourth mic. Yeah. yeah. Talking about like uh like sex and all that with a yeah. with a porn star. She yeah. I'd like to have her back on, but she lives She disappeared. In, I don't see I her. I think anymore. she lives in Poland or something. Like yeah. she moved to one of those Eastern European countries that that uh, has a big porn industry. Well, don't they all? Makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not sure which country has the. Uh, it's like the, the leaders, the Hollywood of fucking. I think it's Bulgaria. <laughs> no, that's for prostitutes. He's talking about porn, the industry. No, for prostitutes, it's uh, the Perfect. Netherlands. No, bro. What In are you Amsterdam. About? What? No, the a- Amsterdam has one street. Why would it be yeah, the whole it's, Netherlands? It's one neighborhood. It's one neighborhood, and, and people are against it. Germany. Germany, I, I heard it's like big on prostitution. Like those have... aren't those aren't a whorehouses. Those are concentration camps. Yeah, they're not they're not willing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone there Jesus is unwilling. Christ. No, like they have. Uh, I found out in Germany they have this notorious club. It's very <laughs> well known. It's like seven stories. The high. Nazi party. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? It's a club. I forgot. I forgot the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a club. Uh, it's a Nazi club. party. The Pasha. It's, it's called the what? The Pasha. The Pasha. Yeah. Like a Pasha. Yeah. Like a like a, a Arab Pasha. Yeah, but it's seven. It's, In it's, Germany, it's, it's basically it's basically. 
Sounds Why? like sex trafficking. Well, yeah. look, it's a club slash a hotel slash a brothel slash a love hotel. A love hotel? It just sounds like a brothel. Slash strip club. Oh, yeah. I so it's that. a whorehouse. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, okay. It's a very big whorehouse. It's Run like by club. Arab dudes, if it's called the Pesha. <laughs> uh, I think they're Russian, actually. Okay. Really? Yeah. Fucking Germans. Yeah. It's so, funny what they, they, they draw the line, like where they draw the <laughs> line, and then what's like acceptable in Germany and what isn't. In, just in Germany alone, it's a sixteen point one billion dollars a year industry. Wow, Fuck. that's why they do it. When I was in Germany, we didn't go, but there was a club uh, near our hotel. It was a, a swinger club slash karaoke bar. That's a weird mix. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, I I have to that. go see that." There's something <laughs> very funny about you going. Look, I'm gonna go sing my song. Don't fuck anyone. <laughs> so you're singing, you're singing fuck it's raining men while your wife is getting banged by four fucking loving you. Your wife has nice tits. It's easy because you. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh so God. insane. Yeah. But fun. It does sound like fun yeah. if you're into that shit. But yeah, that would be the biggest fear. You're yeah. trying to investigate yeah. and you're like, don't fuck anyone. <laughs> we, we did, um, we tried to trick my friend, uh, Louis, that was, cause he was doing a documentary of my, uh, European tour and, uh, we, he, he'd film everywhere. So wherever we'd go, he'd go in and he wouldn't ask first. <laughs> like he just, he, we, so we'd show up in a venue and he'd just show up with his camera. What are you doing, sir? I'm with the crew. Yeah, and then they'd be like, who, who is that? Why? And then, so we told them, we were like, look, you fucking have to ask before you start filming. You got to show them your camera, tell them, uh, t tell them you're going to film. And then he's like, okay, no problem. So we convinced him that on the way to Germany. Oh. And then we found out about that, uh, that uh, swinger club karaoke oh. bar. So then we're like, oh, fuck, we should go there. And then just to see Louis... Tell the guy at the door, I'm just going to film some stuff. I hope this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Just a documentary. I'm Watch doing. him get a German-sized <laughs> beating. <laughs> it's a documentary. <laughs> nine, 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 nine. Yeah, the Germans. Odd. Odd. Yeah. It always odd. surprised me where they draw the line. Yeah. Good comedy crowd, so. Yeah. Yeah. But when English I or German? Uh, I don't speak German, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I do know, though, that there's a, a German comic... Uh, who did do the uh, the equivalent of the Bell Center? Like he he did a stand up in a in front of like fifty or sixty thousand people. I think, maybe not that many, maybe twenty thousand. I think you could do well in Germany if you're charismatic. It's yeah, been, it's yeah. been proven in the past. Yeah. Like I saw, because I saw videos of Hitler. Uh, a little open micer. Yeah, I saw, I saw I saw videos of Hitler, bro. Not even one punchline, yeah. but they're all going crazy. Yeah. They're all going crazy. <laughs> Plus all his material, hacky Jew stuff. Did well. Oh, Jesus. Did well. Yeah. Did well. I think. <laughs> I think I could do. I think I could do well in God Germany. Damn, it's weird how they always. And Norm Macdonald had the, the bit about this. But how they always say that. Oh, Hitler. It's because he was charismatic. I think it's just the German people were extremely racist. Yeah. Because he's the least charismatic person I've ever seen yeah. in my life. He's the loud weirdo. He's so charismatic. And then you look at a video. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Yeah. What the fuck is that? He's just an angry. He's yeah. he's an Joe, angry short man. He's Joe Pesci without the, the sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what happened like to Pesci. Every, <laughs> everything I see. Joe Pesci unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, every time I see Hitler, I imagine funny how, funny yeah. how. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Honey <laughs> how? <laughs> he was mad because oh, yeah, are too much, bro. The Jewish waiter made a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Seems funny. that mustache kind of funny. Funny how? <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's so angry. Yeah, that's a funny mustache. Funny how? Yeah. Then he yeah. he pulled. You know what's funny is people that get mad and they compare stuff like uh, Trump is Hitler. He's not. You know how you know? Because you take stuff at different levels. So Hitler clearly a Jewish person pissed him off, and he's like, "So much, I'm gonna kill all of you." Whereas Trump was ridiculed at that dinner by Obama, and he's like, "I'm gonna take his fucking job." Mm. Different levels of revenge. Yeah. Right? Different levels yeah. of revenge. You can't compare the two. Yeah. <laughs> One, very ambitious. Yeah. The other, Hitler. You have to be fucking <laughs> insanely ambitious that the president makes fun of you and you're like, fuck you, I'm going to be president. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm kicking you out of your house. I'm kicking actually, you out of your yeah. fucking house. He's That's crazy. A, he's the proof, though, at how life is super easy if you have if you confidence try. Yeah. and you have objectives. Because, yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> 
Donald Trump. Yeah, the last two American presidents were two presidents we never thought we'd ever see. Hmm. A black dude and then just a guy doing it out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. Oh, God. Yeah, confidence uh, helps. Mm. And j- what you said is, is right, just having a vision. Yeah. When I plan stuff, like when, when I think, okay, I'm going to attain, all the ridiculous shit that we've been talking about for years actually started happening. Yeah. Because we actually put it down and said mm. we're going to get this done. And you, sometimes with no plan. You know what I think <laughs> works too? It's just saying shit out loud. Yeah, it happens. And uh, and it's not even to get other people to know about it. It's just to 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 actually believe it yourself. Yeah, put it in the universe as they say. Yeah, because no. if you're like, because everyone has dreams. But if you if you tell other people your dream, then you you don't want to look like a piece of shit that failed. So you work hard to make sure your dream comes true. That's good. Yeah. Interesting. Always announce yeah. that you're going to do something, even if you're not going to do it. Also, uh, Poseidon. I'm going to have sex with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poseidon <Never>. 2021 <laughs> Bell Center. Also, also, what works apparently is if you look in the mirror right before you go to bed, you give positive reinforcement to yourself. You yell Candyman. Yeah. So if like you that say you Candyman to... five times, your <laughs> dreams come true. So like that when you Jordan to... Peele comes out and if your you. dream was to get murdered in a black movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're remaking that. <laughs> so when yeah. you go to bed, you go to bed with that positive reinforcement in the yeah. back of your head. You that's all you normally lack. You're just mm. positive reinforcement, right? That's the only problem. That's the only boulder in your way. When you look in the mirror, is that what you think? I just need some positive reinforcement? No. Do you ever look in the mirror and go, that's the reason I'm failing? Mm. <laughs> uh no. Because I know what the you- problem is. What the ba- like the biggest honestly the biggest you don't even know it in your house little things you have to tweak little things around your house like if you want to know how often do you shower uh twice a day okay I'll tell you right now when you go to your bathroom you're gonna go home the the biggest hindrance in your life the biggest cancer the biggest piece of shit in your life is go to your sink right go to the sink in the bathroom and look up it's the biggest biggest problem <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love ripping me bro <laughs> can you open this for me yeah sure I'm strong dude. Oh, oh, oh! He's angry. Use your teeth. It's, <coughs> it's just beer, bro. Use your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Open that. That's weird. It's is a it, twist off. Is it? Yeah. So twist it. Why isn't it twisting? I don't know. You tell us. You're the twist master. Usually they twist. It's super easy. Look. Yeah. <laughs> he just look at that. Effortly. He could have just used two fingers. What happened? I don't know, but I love. Look at him try. What's going on? Use this lighter. No, no, no. See, it's a uh, light it up, light it up. Set it on I fire. I think Pierre wants you to burn yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre's, P- Pierre, Pierre's, Pierre, Pierre's got this. Yeah, I know, I know See, that. Pierre's trick. getting promoted. <laughs> Jesus, no, Christ, but it's, it's going to be an explosion. No, no, no. Oh, the whole. Uh, we're, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, whole a, it's a twist up. cap. It's it's dented on the side. That's why you can't twist it off. Oh, there we. Go. Oh, there Pierre, the hero. There you go. The and hero. now it's gonna be chipped. As not fuck. not the but hero that we oh, yeah. needed, but the hero oh, we deserve. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> Fucking Pia. He didn't chip. He didn't chip the edges. He didn't chip the edges. And I cut myself by mistake. Oh, that doesn't surprise us no. at all. You, do fuck. you normally get sad and cut yourself? No. Are you nuts, bro? I don't know. I'm just. That's crazy. By the way, I was yelling so much at uh, the people at on at Telus yesterday. Oh yeah. What happened? So my phone isn't uh, working. Like, it's already been dropped and damaged, but I didn't want to change it. Even though I have insurance, you could change it if it's damaged because I don't care. I have Bluetooth. I don't give a shit. But it's been dropping a lot of calls lately. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck, I'm just going to send it in for repairs to get a new, you know, send send me a new one. I'm paying for insurance because I hate calls dropping and missing calls. So they go, we don't have a replacement phone. for We don't have a Google, any pixels in stock. And the uh, the options that they offer me, I go, these are stupid options. No, no, at least offer me the same or an equivalent or better. I'm not going to get a shittier phone. And he's like, well, you have to call TELUS. The insurance people come. I go, fuck, that's not true. So I call TELUS. Like, no, the insurance has to handle it, right? So I'm doing this back and forth. Then TELUS is trying to send me to stores, but to pay for an upgrade to get a new phone. I go, that's not what I'm asking. I'm paying for fucking insurance. Just give me the insured yeah. phone. So I'm going back and forth. I call back the insurance place. I'm yelling. This lasted all day. This lasted be- before the podcast I did with Thomas Levac and then after. So I'm fucking losing my shit. Then finally I get a lady who is just repeating what's on the screen. And I'm like, look, we've established. I'm telling you the phone you're offering me is of lesser value. The deal we have, the contract that you made me sign, the contract that you guys created says that I get the same phone equivalent or or better, not worse. Uh, well, the one we have is, and she tells me again, I go, you fuck. Give me, give me somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about. So they gave me a person who offers me a phone, which is again, newer, but not the not equivalent. Better. But I'm like, you know what? I'll fucking take it. 
Then the guy's like, all right, but I have to send you an email. You have to send us a, a proof of your driver's license. You have to sign an affidavit. What? Bro, this, but I fucking did it. I go, fuck you, motherfucker. I'm going to get that goddamn phone. So I fucking jumped through all these goddamn hoops to send it in and then still pay them 250 bucks for fucking it wasn't it wasn't that complicated in the past it's never that complicated they're trying to be mm. petty with me because i was yelling at them all day but i still went through with it because i made it this far it pissed me off yeah are you still uh, what what company are you with tell us okay because i want to go i'm with rogers and i decided like this rogers weekend, is worse though i know that they're yeah. worse but all of those big companies are bad I want to, but I want to, I don't know anyone that uses those little shitty new companies like Fizz. What the or, fuck is uh, Fizz? Uh, Fizz is what? like, they, they have like fucking uh, uh, North America plans so you can be in the States or Canada. Oh, oh shit. Uh, unlimited everything for like, uh, unlimited everything is I think 90 bucks a month Canadian. Not bad. And, but like, cause I pay, I pay for my phone. I pay for my wife's phone. I pay for my mother-in-law's yeah, phone. Same. And um, uh, yeah. my mother-in-law, she fucking doesn't use anything. So I, I could get a, a $25 plan for her, 25 for my wife, and then 90 for me. And I'd be good. And right now, fucking Rogers, I'm paying a shit ton. And I always get messages going, oh, you, you're, you're, You've passed your, your limit. Data, yeah, all that so shit. now you're so now I'm fucking living in nineteen eleven with no <laughs> no goddamn data. How much are you paying? I'm paying way too much. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm paying like uh probably close to two hundred. Yeah. For three lines. For three lines, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I I pay uh just mine alone, just mine is uh two hundred bucks a month. And I also have oh, one shit. for my mom. Yeah, so it's uh yeah, I'm paying a lot too. Fuck. And my mom doesn't use any data or anything. But that's retarded, bro, in Canada. They've they've, they've overdone it. Well, you know what? Yeah. Canada they fuck around, but now they're fucked too with Telus cuz my contract is up whenever I want if I want to pay mm. 300 bucks to cancel it now, and no matter what it's going to be up in like September. So, I'm going to weigh my options. I'm going to I have three lines. Somebody's going to want to buy those three lines. Is it is it uh, the... uh your company that pays for it or or you pay it? I pay it. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, Fizz is owned by Rogers. Is it? Yeah. Those this is what I heard. Fuck. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, that's what that's what they always do. Though. Yeah. yeah. They, like, uh, f- uh, f- who bought Fido? Was it uh, uh, Rogers? Uh, Rogers, uh, Rogers own... Fido. Telus has Kudo. Yeah. And Bell has Virgin. Uh, Bell hasn't but been a all, all of those companies were real companies, and then the the giants just no. buy them up. But also, they all uh, conspire to keep prices high. Yeah. You know that, right? That's what they do in Canada. Yeah, of course. But yeah. that should be fucking easy. I remember yeah. when I worked for Telus, uh, there was like a like a party or something, or like a, a meeting that we had to go to as employees in a basement. No, no, no. It was like a it was like at a sex party. No, no, no. Like at a yeah. were they wearing masks? No, bro. You know, <laughs> Victorian era. They have masks. weddings, bro. And uh, what do you? Is there galas who can in, get uh, the most phones up their yeah. butt? Yeah, was that a go with the contest? Uh, <laughs> Did no, you win bro. that contest? Is that why the horse no. had no trouble going in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm the 1998 Teller's ass phone champion. I can handle this. <laughs> and they're telling him, Poseidon, you're supposed to take it out of the box first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of him trying to jam a box up his ass. And they're like, no, 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 I'll get it. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm a goddamn professional. Just rinse the box off. We can sell it after. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I like that he waits now. He just takes yeah, the punches. Yeah, he knows. He knows. Uh, Fucking, no. that's a... Uh, Don't panic. You're going to go home and cut yourself later? No, Don't Jesus panic. Christ. <laughs> Look at these scars. Yeah. <laughs> All your scars are emotional. Yeah. <laughs> so you're at your party for... So, the, and, and I think the VP or something from Rogers the, or you, Bell DP. was that. The, the, v, the DP. Yeah. The VP. You DP'd a guy named Roger is what you're saying. Yeah. Wait, how do you DP? A, you can't DP a guy. Yeah, you can DP. A, you, you can, need you, you need help from anything. a friend. You, yeah, though. you just need an associate. But yeah. you can you can DP anything. <laughs> Anyways, the v, I think the vice president or something from DP Rogers you? or Bell was that at the Telus talking to the the president of Telus or something. Wait, something are like you that. trying to? T- did you just, is this whole convoluted uh, basement sex story all have to do with you trying to repeat what we said in ten seconds, which was that they all conspired together to keep the prices up? Yeah, but so openly, I'm trying to say, like, they yeah, don't but even we bother. said that's why we didn't say it was a secret. Yeah. We all know this. Yeah. So we yeah. said in ten seconds, then you go, let me add to that nothing, but let <laughs> me take three minutes to get there. <laughs> well, it took three minutes because you guys kept ripping me. You with fucking plus, gay you, jokes. Have, you have no idea what they said. <laughs> yeah. 
So they could have said, yeah. fuck you, asshole. Yeah, no, yeah, you that's fuck true. you. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And they're like, we should go somewhere else. There's that giant Greek man looking <laughs> at us. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been the worst Uber driver. The guy's like, yeah, it's only five minutes. No, no, we're going we're gonna to take a detour. <laughs> Why would we take a detour? It's going to be a 20 minute trip. It's safer. <laughs> It's five minutes down. The, just follow the GPS. No, no, I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> we're gonna go backwards and around. We're gonna, we're gonna make a circle. <laughs> I'm gonna give you all the scenery. I'm gonna give you the history of all these buildings we're passing. <laughs> Sir, I'm in a hurry. I'm gonna be late for work. <laughs> Is that your Uber experience? <coughs> oh, I was gonna ask you about stars and Uber, but before I do, um, you, you you're like me. You do the Amazon Prime thing. Yeah. Uh, you know how when you do the Prime Day stuff, they have this company in Telcom. Which are you? You hate them, yeah. right? Yeah, they're the, normally the shit. Delivery people. Yeah, they're normally shit. I don't know how it's you. It's a house, so it might be different. Mine, I I really like them because they just drop it off. I don't care. So, my neighborhood's safe. So mine, they told me uh, we're gonna start bringing it always to the door. So whenever I get a phone call, I know it's the door. I let them in, and they go upstairs. They drop it from the door. I'm like, that's fine. For the first time yesterday, they asked me to rate it. They sent me a package. Rate your experience, and the in big letters, we delivered to your door, and they attached photos of the package not left at my door it was left in the lobby mm. so i fucking reply with one star i go yeah that's not my door that's the building lobby where everyone who lives in the building and people who yeah. don't live in the building can go i go how the fuck do you proudly tell me to your door and send me a photo of the package yeah. it, where everyone could kick it on the floor in the lobby it's fucking insane yeah. to me it's just completely and they did the same thing today again oh, like i delivered to your door a picture and it's downstairs in the lobby and i'm looking at my phone i'm like you I ripped them so hard on this that now they do deliver to my door. They use, and they take a picture. Other companies. With the apartment number. Yeah, other everything. companies used to deliver to my door. Like normally yeah. until this week, until this one. And now when they're proud, they're like, we delivered to your door. You've never delivered once to my door. Yeah. It's other companies. You guys never delivered to my door. I, I think I had called Amazon and I, I, I had told them, look, just uh, I don't care if it takes an extra day. Just don't send it without Intelcom anymore or something like that. I sent it with Canada Post or some shit. Yeah, send it with someone else that yeah, can yeah, yeah, get the that, job done. Th that was fucking ridiculous, bro. I had him send out for my patrons like all these uh, shirts that I was giving mm. out and all that shit. And he went to the post office. And just imagine Poseidon shows up there oh. with like 70 parcels and of a mail. fur coat. You can do. <laughs> I was, was wearing the fucking do, do you have a business account with uh, the post office? Uh, the Canada Post thing, Post Me or no? Yeah, because I make if, one. If, yeah, because then they, they could go get. The shit at his house. He wouldn't have to. He wouldn't have to. Oh. To to make it to the post office. They 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 just go get it wherever you tell them to go get it. Oh fuck! Really? And and you get really good prices. Okay, I'm gonna do yeah. that because it's very expensive. It's costing yeah. me a couple hundred bucks each time yeah. I send stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I good. I had um I decided um my wife has a she she's starting this company that Pierre might be in uh it it's not decided yet but uh. Because <laughs> uh, uh, she she's starting a, a a food thing, and I oh, think yeah, Pierre yeah. is going to be one of the partners. Is but this I'm another one sure of yet. fucking Pierre's pyramid schemes? I'm tired it's of Pierre's of, pyramid yeah, schemes. Yeah. <laughs> you get yeah, but but she told me she was like uh, she called the post office because I told her get business prices like to, don't pay Fuck, the the so price smart. that people pay, and then she was like yeah, so they told me they're just gonna come get all the shit here, and then I was like Fuck. That's amazing. Yeah, because everyone I know that sells T-shirts or merch, they go like a fucking buffoon wait in line yeah. at the post office. You can just get someone to go to your house. I am one level higher. I get him yeah. to come to my house yeah. and I send him to the well, post yeah. office. By the way... <laughs> There's Every... still a buffoon in your thing. There's <laughs> there's always a buffoon in, the, <laughs> in, the, in our chain, in our supply chain. <laughs> Every single time that I've went, by the way, no lineup. But as soon as I show up, eight people show up behind me. Yeah, you know why? Because it's the, mm. just the laws of, of the universe. You show up with fucking 70 packages. Mm. That's when people are going to come. Yeah. And this guy and was like, getting very... Uh, uh, impatient. Agitated the, the other day. And agitated. he was telling you, sir, this is a, a butcher. <laughs> sir, <laughs> quit trying to send your packages. I want to buy steak. Please, the addresses yeah. are on top. Uh, God damn it, it's the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, I want this one priority. Yeah. <laughs> this one express post. Yeah, so we don't do that here. You're gonna fucking do it today. I got money. I got Patelsis credit card. Sir, that isn't a credit card. <laughs> it's a sock. You know what I was nervous of? That's hard. If, if when he had my credit card, because he was trying to remember the password, if he just started yelling it out, you know, out lo out loud. Why would I do that? Nine four two six, which is not my password, you silly fuckers. But you know, I'm just saying, if he was yelling it, how do you remember? Just in your head? Yeah. 
You never once thought of checking with me? No. Was... If you had gotten it wrong, what would you have done? Would you have panicked? No, I would have called you and be like, would you have said, one second, everybody, I got this. Because yeah, everybody else would have been behind you. Wait, that yeah, doesn't look fuck. like someone with a stolen card, too. When you're like, what's a, what's a PIN number? I got to make oh, a phone call. I got to make a phone call. <laughs> they asked me for a <laughs> PIN. <laughs> okay. 6139. Oh, it works. <laughs> yeah. Good job. <laughs> Sir, what's in all those packages? It's not drugs, so what do you care? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you to wait outside for a but, second. <laughs> I actually mailed drugs to to someone who's uh, in this room right now oh, uh, a couple of years same, ago uh, uh, when when pot f right before pot became legal uh, in Canada mm -hmm. I, I went to mail pot to someone that uh, that he was way the fuck uh, up north and uh, and I, I go there and I I was like it's gonna be legal soon so they're not gonna arrest me but then when I showed up I didn't have enough money to pay cash Oh. So I had to use my oh, card, shit. and I was like, "Oh, oh fuck. fuck!" I should have went back home to get more cash. Yeah, you were like, "Fuck!" But it. yeah, but I was like, "Ah, fuck! It's gonna be legal in a month." The, you know how stupid the government would look arresting they put you in jail? someone for mailing pot, and it wasn't like crystal meth; it was pot. But I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" I was I was really nervous. It would have been hilarious if you got arrested, and, like you have to stay in jail for three weeks <laughs> till it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what happened to like old, uh, like uh, in Canada, people drug charges don't stay in jail a long time, but in the states like uh, states like uh, Colorado and where where pot is is uh, legal, I wonder if there are still old guys in jail for drug charges because of pot, but oh, it's legal. I now. hope not. There probably is though. People could send in comments because if they know, because I'm very curious because that yeah. would suck. Could mm, you imagine that, yeah. you're seeing people suck. open up weed stores? And you yeah. got fucking uh, yeah. fucking fourteen years yeah. for way less, or for half and a joint. Plus, a lot of states that have the 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 three the three strikes you're out thing. Yeah, the three strikes you're fucked for life. Yeah. So imagine if you th like the first two strikes are real crimes, and then the third one is they catch you with weed, and then you're in jail for life. Oh god. <laughs> and then you have fucking everyone is smoking weed legally now. Oh, I would. Yeah, that's how you commit suicide. Yeah. yeah. That's how you uh, pull a Hillary Clinton. But mm. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the guy at the post office. It was fun. It was entertaining. Hillary Clinton starting a podcast. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 she's going to be on Gas <laughs> Digital. Yeah. She's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she she almost signed with uh, for, Compound, but uh, yeah, Gas Digital she, stole her away. She's actually starting a podcast, yeah. apparently, and she's it's trying to develop a whack person. pack. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, she's trying to find a Robin Quivers type person, all that. It's Could you imagine uh, Hillary Clinton doing live reads for MeUndies? Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. MeUndies. Apparently, my husband tells me when yeah. he's having sex with interns. Yeah. He loves these. <laughs> Don't get caught with your pants down when I send someone to murder you. <laughs> MeUndies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mike... If people want to catch you on tour in French right now, it's uh, MikeWord.ca. MikeWord.ca. Mike Ward Noir is the epic tour happening right now it all is. across this beautiful province of ours. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Suzekut. MikeWord Suzekut. For those of you who don't know, it is the number one French language comedy podcast on the planet. And in order to prove it, because uh, Mike has balls, he will be performing mm -hmm. live at the Montreal Bell Center during the Just for Last Festival yes. this summer. It's July 18th. And you could still get tickets. Maybe when yeah. you see this, you can't. But I'm hoping that you can. So go online. Um, if right. if you bought, I I bought the um the uh, the domain name uh, Centre Brag because it's yeah. uh, in French it's the Centre Bell so uh, C E N T R E Brag I I shouldn't even spell it because if you can't speak French why would you go see this why would you go see a French <laughs> show so Centre Brag Centre Brag point com Nice. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, get your tickets. It's going to be an epic night. Uh, Mike has it's, an idea. He's going to so have his stupid. guests on there. It's going to be so much it's fun. so stupid. You're going to see this <laughs> fucking <laughs> lunatic there. It's the dumbest thing. Pierre already got tickets. Pierre's going to be there. It's going to just be a historic it night actually, of ridiculousness. It actually is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking it's going to sell out. You know how stupid that is? You know what's dumber? <laughs> is that someone that had sex with Poseidon sees him like that like the dumbest yeah. thing she's ever done <laughs> i'm sorry for saying the horse sees it that way so mike <laughs> ward 
MikeWard.ca. Yeah. Uh, head over there. And also, like I said, subscribe. If you're not already subscribed to uh, Mike Ward Suzuki, oh, the number one French and, language podcast um, on the planet. March 15th, I'm doing an English show that you're hosting here at Le Bardel. Yeah. At 7 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, we're doing a live two-drink minimum. A open so to the public? two weeks. And tickets are going to be uh, on sale? Tickets are on sale. Uh, I sent an email to Daniel, so it's going to be Soon. probably on sale now. Okay, when they see this, yeah. it should be on sale. Yeah, so we'll put the link in the in the description. In the description, we're gonna tell Jason do that. I think it's uh, or if you Google a uh, uh, Bordel Comedy, Comedy Club, you're gonna find it. Yeah. It's not that hard. And then you look at the date. 15th, yeah, exactly. And buy tickets there. Uh, PantelisComedy.com for all of my stuff. Uh, March thirteenth. Yeah, sorry, sorry to, but uh, March thirteenth, you're doing Leonardo the da Vinci. Boys. Yeah, with uh, Guido Massimo and yeah. Emil Curie will be hosting. Oh, nice. Yeah. And plus, you're doing uh, Quebec City in French. May the 9th, yeah. You're doing Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke, April 3rd. That's the only one that I'm really nervous about more than anything because I don't know anyone in Sherbrooke. Is it French or English? English. English? A lot of English people, though, in the Eastern Territory. I got to find them. I got to yeah. find these people. And Toronto. Toronto, April 25th. That, too. Again, I don't know how it's going to sell in Toronto. I'm very curious to find out. Um, we're going to... I don't know because I don't have access to those tickets. I think Emil knows, but he's not telling me. So we have those shows coming up. I'm going to be in Gatineau like, uh, on the 20th of March. I completely forgot about it. With French or English? I don't know. I think French. Okay. Yeah. Well, are you doing your full show? No, with um, uh, JC Soret. He's doing a show. He invited me on. I completely forgot about it. And then they tagged me in a post yesterday. I was like, oh, shit. Thank God. I got to put that in my calendar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we can get all those dates. So Pantelscomedy.com. Pantelscomedy.com. Uh, pant uh, Patreon.com slash Pantels for me. Um, and also your Patreon. If you want really access to tickets or to watch Mike Wurtz, a good, go to Patreon. All the people that got the best seats for the Bell Center yep. were patrons of Mike. So we take care of our patrons. And we Poseidon, did. where are they going to find you? The Poseidon 69 on Instagram and, and Twitter. And you could catch Poseidon on the next season of uh, Chris Hansen's To Catch a Predator. Yeah. Uh, Poseidon is there trying to seduce a horse. <laughs> and maybe the next episode, I'll try and seduce a giraffe or something. He had I, to kill it. He yeah. had to destroy <laughs> everything we <Yeah>. built. <laughs> I want to, if, if either uh, Jason or Steve can Photoshop him in front of Chris Hansen, Dressed up, maybe like someone that had actually have sex with the horse, like with a backwards hat. Yeah, <laughs> like maybe. But well, I think a guy that'd fuck a horse would be wearing overalls, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Steve, Torelli's probably already working. Yeah. Or they'd be dressed like the those hat. guys that uh, those horse competitions there, horse racing with the whips. A and jockey. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, go fuck yourself. <laughs>